What we're going to look at next are some general enhancements they've made to our high speed surfacing toolpaths. So I've got a part of my screen. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. I'm interested in machining or finishing this shaded surface just using a traditional scallop toolpath. And I'm going to show you how much these new enhancements can, can change what you can do with just a simple scallop. So we'll start by writing just a simple baseline scallop toolpath. So I'll grab an equal scallop. Uh, for my machining region, I'll just go ahead and select those three areas there. And we won't leave any stock on those guys. And I'll go ahead and add some avoidance in there. And I'll just do a quick shift click to grab some avoidance. That'll keep the tool off of there. I'll go down to my toolpath control and I'll add a little bit of projected smoothing to start. And we'll stick with closed offsets and tooltip to center containment should work okay for what we're doing. I'll grab my tool, it's just a four millimeter ball nose. And then I'll go down to my cut parameters and we'll do a one way uh, step over about one millimeter. And I'll go ahead and choose to keep the tool down at 100%. And just double checking the rest. All right, we'll green check that. And what we're expecting to see once it generates is a pretty traditional scallop toolpath. And that's what I'm looking at. If I zoom in, this is every scallop I've ever written. Um, and it's not bad, it's fine, uh, but we can play with this a lot. And we can make this a very, very different animal with a couple of tweaks. So the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and look at these transitions. I've got that, that traditional sort of just lazy move over the surface for the next pass. So if I go down to my linking parameters, I'm gonna do a couple of things. Number one, I'm gonna zero out all of my horizontal moves just to start. I don't want any horizontal moves. I'm just leaving the vertical stuff on there. And then I'm gonna use this button down here called apply transitions. Now what this is gonna do is this is gonna apply my leads or my spaghetti numbers uh, to every transition. So let's just take a look and see what that's gonna look like. So I should expect to see some actual movement away from the part uh, while I move between each passes. So apply transitions. And we'll go ahead and regenerate that and see what we end up with. And there you can see instead of moving across the surface, I'm actually using my leads to move between each pass. Now that may not be the most efficient way to do that. Let's start playing a little bit more. Uh, I'll go back into the parameters and on my transitions angle, I'm actually gonna drop these to zero. And that's gonna sort of line those guys up a little nicer for me. You can see I've got a nice arc out and arc back in, not, not sort of moving across the surface to pick up a new pass. Now, I wanna continue messing with this a little bit, so I'm gonna go back into my parameters. I'm gonna go back up to my toolpath control specifically, and I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to a trimmed offset. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and add a curve to better flow that toolpath. So I'm gonna go down to my curve function, select that. Beyond solid, I'll just simply go for edges. And I'll we'll zoom in a little bit, I'll grab that, and just bounce that guy along that bottom edge there. Okay. All right, then I'm gonna go to my cut parameters, and since this is now a technically an open contour, I'm gonna change my open contour direction to a zigzag. We'll go ahead and apply that, regenerate it, and we'll take a look at what we get. That is a much nicer looking toolpath. We went from a traditional scallop with a couple of tweaks to something that is very much not a traditional scallop. Uh, very, very powerful little, little tweaks they've made there. Okay, we're gonna do the similar thing this time, but we're gonna try it with a raster, uh, one of my favorite toolpaths. So I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna grab a raster, and for my machining geometry, I'm just gonna go ahead and select this face right there, and we'll zero out that stock. I'll go down to my toolpath control. I'll go ahead and include a silhouette boundary. Again, tooltip center, that should be fine. We'll go ahead and use the same tool there. Uh, down to my cut parameters, I'll go ahead and put my step over again at about one millimeter. Keep tool down 100%. And it's a raster, so we'll be zigzagging. And I'll leave it on the custom to just go ahead and uh, just do parallel to X, that should be fine. Uh, on my linking parameters, again, I'm gonna go ahead and do a, a simple extension by about five millimeters there. 
Uh, again, I'm going to zero out my horizontals. And we'll go ahead and apply that to every transition move. And we'll see what we get with this. So we can see I've got a really lovely extension of that tool path past those outer edges. That looks really nice, but eh, I'm probably extending a little bit too much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into my parameters. And rather than chase this number here, I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple of check or avoidance surfaces here just to keep that tool path under control. And we'll keep it off the floor stock by, say, about three millimeters. And we'll see if that trims it up for us. So again, regenerating it. And there we go, really nice. So that ability to apply my leads as transitions, extremely useful, very, very cool.